That's no, awesome. seriously, it's the nerdy side that, that got us here. Like he's really, really good at figuring out science and technical accuracy and stuff like that. And that's why we have a premium product. Yeah, I mean, ammo ammo is a big deal. And, and it's cool, like, but that's also why we love the, that's the cap, that's part of capitalism that we all love, right? Is like, yeah. you see a problem, you're like, I can learn how to do this. I can make money from it because everybody, you know what I mean? Like there's no yeah. shortage of success out there. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Thinking Project Podcast, where we interview founders and creatives to help you take the next step in your business by listening to inspired stories of these wonderful founders. I hope you enjoy this podcast and make sure to share it with your friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. How are you, Laura? I'm awesome. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> it is a beautiful day. You're out in Florida still, right? I well, am. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is. Let me let me do a little intro. This is the second time you've been on. Um, the first time we were talking about your book, uh, your, your marketing company, that transition. You were in Hawaii, I think, right? I was. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Um, now you're in Florida, and you have. A, a new business. Tell me more mm -hmm. about that. My new business is Sovereign Ammo. We make competition quality ammunition for people who don't like blowing up their guns. They <laughs> like to know they're working with quality. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about that because there's a difference then. You know, like way back in the day, I didn't know the difference between all of the types of ammo. So you have competition ammo so tell me like what is that explain that a little bit more well there's competition ammo there's like match grade there's all these different things but competition quality basically means that uh the recipes we use to put everything together i say recipe because i don't know what else to call it the formula um you know not every primer is going to go with every powder and blah 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 and we what we do is we not only work with the very best components but we're also working with the best recipe uh <laughs> to actually create things that are very tightly grouped, uh, they're precise, and you can rely on them, and you don't have to worry about um, something bad happening or your gun being all dirty or whatever. So it's kind of cool. That's cool. Okay, now that we've gone past a little bit of the formalities, <laughs> <you're>, the, <laughs> the, the, the spiciness of the story, though, that's what, that's what, you know, <laughs> when we, when I put it out on LinkedIn, I was like, hey, I'm looking for more guests. You were like, the the story is spicy so let's let's dive in because i think if people have listened to this they know who you are they know you're awesome we'll get into all of that but thanks man I'm curious yeah i'm curious to hear the story now because you've transitioned and, and kind of got to this point uh so tell really left you dangling with some bait huh now you're curious <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so uh the whole reason that uh we started this company is because in the middle of the pandemic, we were living in Hawaii and Hawaii had harsher restrictions than California and New York. And, you know, yeah. COVID is real. I'm not one of those people who thinks it's not, <laughs> but I'm also not afraid of it. And, yeah. um, you know, when I got it, finally, I was like, oh, thank God, can we just get this over with? Right. <laughs> um, but I just found a lot of the restrictions to be really onerous. I mean, they were handed out $5,000 citations for like the dumbest stuff. Like, oh, your umbrella is more than six feet in diameter, citation. Oh, you watched a sunset, citation. Uh, oh, you're not on the on a desolate beach with a mask on, uh, citation. And we're gonna chase you down on an ATV. And it's like, you know, I can't live this way. Um, you know, not only that, like living on an island in the middle of a pandemic, you experience greater um, supply chain shutdown um, side effects. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, very transparently, I have, I have been very opposed to all the lockdowns. They didn't make a difference. Um, if someone's like, oh, but it helped, come <laughs> fight me, whatever. Like, no, we're not doing this, I'm done. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, yeah. collateral damage was not worth it. Um, yeah. So my first company was really affected. My second company, the one that you and I met because of um, was affected, you know, guess how many speaking gigs I got to do in the middle of um, a pandemic. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there was just a lot of changes. And 
man, I was like, okay, so my fellow Islanders need food and they need jobs and they can't because we're 85% um, tourism dominant. And without the tourists, what do you have? You yeah. got people who want to eat and people who are getting restless and mad and whatever. So there was a, like a lot of looting of the, the hotels that were closed. And I was like, you know what? I don't feel like dying for a can of beans. Yeah. Like I'm good. So we tried to get some, um, you know, some personal protection um, and we couldn't like Hawaii doesn't really respect second amendment rights. Um, so we ended up having, I mean, I love Hawaii. I want to be really clear. I love it. And I, I can see what it is. And it's like, you can't get a pistol. You can't, you can get like lever action rifle, hunting rifles, but like there was nothing that I could do to actually protect myself. So we tried getting like crossbows and stuff. And, you know, that's really not a good self-defense um, type of weapon. It's just not. Yeah. And, you know, we were living in a community at the time filled with a lot of um, older people. And, you know, I mean, if you think that, you know, you need something and your needs are not being met, you're going to break into the places that are empty first. And then you're going to go up to from no resistance to slightly a, a small amount of resistance, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to start with the people who are younger and can actually take you. You're going to start with the older people. And I'm like, well, not only are our neighbors going to go down, we're going to go down. Like, this is just ridiculous. I mean, things never actually escalated to that point, but you never know. Yeah. Um, sure. So, you know, we were just really tired of feeling like we couldn't defend ourselves. So um, my husband and my business partner, he's like, I'm going to learn to make ammunition. And also I hate feeling this way. And I hate feeling like I'm going to be, arrested every time I leave the house um, because I don't want to put a mask on outside and you know I'm not going to and I was like yeah I don't blame you so we made the incredibly painful decision to move to Florida free state of Florida we love DeSantis and um, we decided to start an ammo company here not just for ourselves but also for other people who've been feeling a little unstable with all the crazy things that have been going on. I mean, you can't deny violence has been on the rise. You know, we've got a major border crisis. We don't even have a border, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's just a lot of different things that made us want to do this. And, and really like what we're looking to do is create a, a, a community of like-minded constitution and America loving people who, uh, want to exercise their second amendment rights to protect their family, but also to defend this nation. So here we are. <laughs> there you go. And so you're, so that's what you guys do that is the, is the ammo. So you make, yeah, we make the ammo. ammo. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. So what kind of restrictions were there? Like what kind of, um, I guess, issues have you ran into with like being able to distribute the ammo? Like Florida is pretty, Fun. you know, you can, okay. Fun. You, is there, there's nowhere that you like can't ship it to or? Well, I mean, you're not sending anything to California, so that's not <laughs> happening. Um, I mean, you can't yeah, send it that... right into Chicago, but you can send it to the suburbs of Illinois. You can't send it to New York City, but you can send okay. it to like the suburbs of New York. Um, we can't ship to Massachusetts at all. It's just difficult. I mean, we can if we have, um, you know, someone with a federal firearms license and FFL. Yeah. Um, if they have one, then they can receive the shipment. <laughs> Um, so we can sell retail anywhere. We can sell, um, you know, wholesale anywhere, but selling to individuals, we do have restrictions based on individual uh, state laws. Yeah. That's crazy. So isn't it? Yeah. It's just, I, I, I mean, cause I'm like, and in full transparency as well with me, like I'm pretty apolitical. Like I like don't really sway to either side. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, and mainly because like, I just, I don't know. For me, I just see like a lot of points on every side. And so when you're talking about like this, um, when you're talking about like these, the, the second amendment though, I'm pretty like right on that. Like, obviously you should, we should all have that. Right. And I was mm -hmm. even talking to a few of my friends um, because, you know, of course, like every couple of years we have to have this debate in America or whatever. And it's just a wild, wild debate. And you know, it's even, crazy right. when you well it, you I think that it's just crazy because w nobody can I, I don't feel like there's just really extreme people on both sides and I don't oh, feel like you are. can have a well I just don't feel like 
we get anywhere when that when all the extremists are involved like i think if there were some people who were like level headed we could be like all right well let's figure something out but you have like you're basically you know, describing my main gripe with everybody and everything right now it's like there's a like seriously it's a pronounced yeah. lack of objectivity and yeah. it's like you just can't talk to anybody because you got a lot of um people just screeching on both sides about really extreme solutions and i'm sorry but those don't work extreme has never worked it is not going to work yeah, all it does yeah. is force your opponents to go more extreme you know i'm i'm a registered republican but i'm 100 percent libertarian oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you know like you the libertarian libertarian is is the party of just leave me alone yeah you know you do whatever weird shit you want to do and i'm going to do what i want to do and yeah i'm not going to step on your toes and i would really appreciate if you don't step on mine and that's it <laughs> Yeah, that's how I, yeah, that's how I feel. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I just wish that um, people would I wish the Libertarian it. Party was um, more <laughs> active. Um, I don't like that we have a two-party system. It just doesn't work. And, you know, the crazy right. part is, like, so many of the people, I mean, I used to, you know, vote Democrat and all that other stuff. But, mm. you know, I felt, I felt like, just too many things went very far to the extreme. And I was like, I can't align myself with this. Yeah. Um, and it just, it doesn't work. But so many of the people that I know, but also so many of the people that um, decide they want to work um, at Sovereign Ammo, like kind of feel the same way. It's just leave me alone. Like I'm not, I'm not terribly political myself. I'm really not. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really just like, I'm really apolitical till people start messing with me. Then it's like, well, now you woke the giant. You shouldn't well, have done yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like, I, wait that till the be... people who don't want to get involved get involved. Like, yeah, I guess that would be the uh, that would be the libertarian view, right? Is like another person's rights end where someone else's begins, right? We have like that kind of like like <clears throat> murder, for example, right? Like your right to do all of these things end when you know, you try to affect somebody else's right to like live or things like that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you have, when you get the, into these, yeah, you know, just crazy time. Yeah. It's a really crazy time politically. I had another podcast that hasn't been released yet. Really good buddy of mine. We mm -hmm. did it the day after the Supreme court decision. That was a wild episode and it's just, wow. but it's just like, you know, I bet just, that was intense. <laughs> well, we were just doing a, yeah, it was a business podcast. And by the way, his name was Derek. I love Derek nothing was it, it wasn't wild between us two it was just a wild time to do a podcast just in general you know what I mean because we yeah. inevitably talked about all, all of those all of those things and so um it was just they're crazy talk about people, uh -huh. I mean I have yeah. to well they're hard to talk about and I, I think the reason why they're hard to talk about is because most people are not very good at processing nuance and that's yeah. the thing about you know like all these people who are like screeching about like we need common sense gun laws <laughs> for home. Do you think the criminals who are actually shooting people down are going to obey your laws anyway? All you're doing is punishing law abiding citizens. Yeah. Um, we need more law abiding citizens who are carrying guns safely and legally. We need more of that, not less of that. Like, yeah. I, I just think that the, the solutions, it's really in response to people's big feelings sure. and Policy should not come from feelings. It should come from logical analysis of nuance and creating um, variables because variables just exist. <laughs> right. No, they just do. I mean, you know, yeah. this whole Supreme Court decision, variables exist within that. I don't believe that one size fits all is ever a good solution. And if anyone's yeah. ever bought any clothes marked one size fits all, <laughs> especially on Amazon, you're going to agree with me. Yeah. It doesn't work <laughs> yeah yeah well and you when you talk about just all of the craziness because that is essentially how your business arrives right like um yeah you're you know you guys so but tell me like the story of like what made you end up getting into into the business of like ammo then because there's a lot like what's we couldn't get any oh you couldn't get any like well, well we couldn't get yeah. any so there was a major yeah. like supply issue um, oh yeah i remember when like <clears throat> i have guns uh, nine mil nine millimeter what those were like mm -hmm. super hard to find for a long time good luck like for a really long time it was like good luck finding any like two two three five five six ammo like, yep you just couldn't it was just didn't exist like and if it did it was just through the roof and so you were just like paying way too much for ammo if you couldn't yeah. make it yourself it, exactly and you know where you know our needs began 
and where our desire to start a business began, it really just centered around our own experience and just realizing we not only can we not get our hands on firearms, but like there's a huge run on ammo. We can't get any. There's a major supply chain disruption. There's a big demand. And, you know, my husband had started to do uh, a tourism company where he was taking people on really awesome island tours. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, uh, I'm not going to say thanks to COVID. I'm going to say thanks to stupid policies. He couldn't even do that. Um, You know, and his tours were taking people outside where there's 0.0 risk of any sort of Rona related problems. So, you know, there was no tourists coming to the islands and then whatever. So he's like, you know, out of a desire to like, you know, provide us protection and keep us actually safe, you know, and I can't get my hands on anything. Maybe I'll just make it. So he ended up learning the whole business and learning, um, you know, how to make ammunition and how to create um, uh, really good recipes uh, there's that word again, um, yeah. <laughs> for the right ammunition, but understanding like the mechanics of, uh, you know, why things work and the science behind everything. Um, I am really in love with my husband's nerdy side. He's great. <laughs> That's no, awesome. seriously. It's the nerdy side that, that got us here. Like he's really, really good at figuring out science and technical accuracy and stuff like that. And that's why we have a premium product. Yeah. I mean, ammo ammo is a big deal and and it's cool like but that's also why we love the that's the cap that's part of capitalism that we all love right is like yeah you see a problem you're like i can learn how to do this i can make money from it because everybody you know what i mean like there's no yeah. shortage of success out there it's like 300 rum um mm-hmm. like the you know the blackouts things like that like those are um those are pretty awesome for us to be able to provide for people. And just because of the quality stuff that we're doing on everything, um, the pricing isn't as much of an issue. Um, I mean, there's obviously going to be a supply and demand curve in every single thing you touch. Um, But in order for us to really just even have the ability to serve people right now, we're we're having greater success with our um, specialty rounds versus like the nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's just really hard to like get the components at the prices that we need to, especially for like law enforcement, and military, they're accustomed to paying dirt cheap prices. It's like, well, that's cool. I can't necessarily <laughs> compete with that. But if you're looking for specialty rounds, then I actually can get the prices um, a lot lower. Um, yeah. So then we're actually just in the same stratosphere as um, some of our high end contemporaries like Hornady and Sierra and stuff like that. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So what was like the logistics behind getting into, I don't know, like any special licensing or any special like registration Mm -hmm. you have to do to start like making and selling ammo? Yeah. You have to have a federal firearms license uh, type six. And um, in order to have that, you have to have a piece of real estate that is zoned correctly. And finding that was a bitch. It was horrible because we moved here January of 2021 and the real estate market was blowing up. Everybody's like, I want my freedom. So they decided (laughs) to move to Florida. So there was a run on real estate. It took us eight months to find a piece of real estate because like for manufacturing and the type of zoning that um, the city that we live in wanted us to have, the minimum square footage was 10,000 square feet. And it's like, well, I mean, we have to walk before we run. I can't afford like $10,000 a month um, you know, yeah. bill for this space that like, I only need a corner of right now. <laughs> like, let's, let's get started. Let's yeah. actually build up some, you know, good customer loyalty, build a name for ourselves and stuff yeah. like that, you know, start smaller, but like, Oh my God, I almost wish I just had the $10,000 a month to just piss away. <laughs> um, although I don't think I would have, it's just, it's frighteningly irresponsible. Yeah. Um, But like getting the space was really hard. And then we had to wait like a full like three months after we got the space to actually get the FFL. It's been a journey, my friend. It is well, yeah. Getting an FFL is not only just like they I mean it's very intense, but it's very long. It takes a long time to get an FFL. I'm not a patient person, and I gotta tell you, this really pushed me to my limits of what uh what I'm capable of. Yeah, I remember I remember like Utah is also Utah and Idaho are also pretty very like. I don't know. We don't have like very strict gun laws. Um, and like, I remember a buddy of mine trying to get like a, you have to have a special 
license uh, and registration for a suppressor. And so he just liked have you know what I mean, you know, he just had a, a couple of those, but I remember him telling us the story and like us watching him go through the process of getting a, like a, the ability to have a suppressor on the end of his gun. And uh, mm-hmm. that was crazy. I mean, it took like, it took like eight, 10 months, something like that before they even like, and I'm so I, then I would assume an FFL is even longer. How long did it take for that? 90 days. An FFL took 90 days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Um, like from, okay. From no, start, was, from start to finish and FFL took. Yeah. Yeah. From the moment that we applied until we actually had it in our hand, it was probably around 70 days. Wow. Um, oh my gosh. What, what the heck was wrong with my friend? I don't know. My friend must've just hit the wrong, hit the wrong department then, man. Cause he was well, like, you know, it could, I mean, was that a federal thing that he had to do? Or was that a, a state question. thing? Mm, I think it was a, mm, that's a good question. I don't know. I thought it was federal. Right. Like, he um, was, cause he was going with like the ATF. Like that's, what, that's who he was doing. Well, that's with. federal. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm not sure why it took so long, but I also know that, um, governing bodies, um, move at a glacial pace. <laughs> so. Well, do, but like 90 days, like 70 to 90 days for an FFL. That's like, I would, that's qu- quicker than I thought. Cause like, that's yeah. a big like um, getting an FFL is not like, that's not a little thing. That's not like, oh, no. Yeah, and and no. And, and the thing is like, when you apply, like, man, you need to read every single box excruciatingly like detailed, yeah. look yeah. at it 50 times. Cause if you screw it up, they're going to send it back and deny you. You can't do that. Cause then you're just adding more time on. I was like, well, we better do this in, you know, oh, okay. total accuracy. So no pressure. <laughs> no that's you know, it's crazy <laughs> that the license that we needed cost us like 34 bucks of all the things that we need that one's like the most valuable but cost the least oh really yeah <laughs> i'm like crazy. nice well is there okay let me ask this then are there like levels to ffl or is it just like one sweeping ffl lets you get access no there's that? there's different classifications i would call them levels uh, okay um classification, different classifications okay. depending on what you want to do like um you know, if you want to be like a firearms importer, there's one. If you want to be a firearms manufacturer, there's another. If you want to manufacture ammunition, that's the type we have. That's another. Oh, um, okay. So it just depends on what classification. Depend on what you want to do. And you can hold multiple. Um, you know, at some point, we're probably mm. going to get into like import and export of um, firearms. My husband is mm-hmm. um, a citizen of Italy. Um, so he was born an Mm -hmm. Italian citizen and all that other stuff. And, and just based on, you know, him still being fluent, still from the country and whatever, um, you know, we're thinking that we have an opportunity to expand down the road into, um, basically components, ammo, firearms back and forth, uh, to Italy from Italy is, a Italy Now I was under the, this is how ignorant I am on a couple of these things. I feel like, I felt like Italy was pretty restricted on guns. Um, I don't live there. I can't tell you, but I can tell you that um, they certainly don't deny their law enforcement uh, guns and ammo. So even if we can't sell to the citizens, we can sell to the government. It's fine. Mm, Okay. And because he's a citizen, it's not like there would be any restriction. Like, you know, if we have to set up like, um, you know, um, uh, a factory space over there okay like, yeah it's fine yeah we'll get there that's, everything yeah, in due time. you just I, this is why i kind of like having these conversations sometimes because you just hear or you get these impressions or you you know you just make stuff up in your head that's like like i don't know like i've always felt like i've never really heard about anything in italy with guns you know what i mean maybe that's just yeah. live in america but well it's probably also because it's not as much of a big deal I don't think over there, yeah. like people tend yeah. to freak out about guns and there's a lot of people who, you know, shoot others. And we, we have a really weird culture here. Um, but that's, they have an older culture there um, where, you know, going out with your dog and hunting in like your private lands, like, why wouldn't you bring your gun? <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like that's the same way here. It's like, yeah. Why? I mean, I, I don't know, just like everybody in there, like Utah is very like, we have we have some we have gun laws of course but like they're pretty like but we you guys also, don't we, even have your metal detector machine at the entrance to your state house i was walking in i'm like where's the metal detector yeah oh welcome ma'am what 
that's it just hello <laughs> oh yeah it's kind of it's kind of weird um utah utah is kind of different for sure but like it's also very like i don't know we haven't really had any i mean I, we have violence like everybody else but um, it's, it's not crazy it's not crazy though like we, yeah, we haven't really ran that, into any you know, big problems you probably just have a nice libertarian state of a lot of people <laughs> feeling like just leave me alone yeah. it's Honestly. yeah i guess i get i don't know i guess i i would have other there there's other people who would argue with me but i feel like utah is a pretty like politically is a is an okay state i don't really like our governor i think he i don't think i don't actually unfortunately know anything about your governor because oh, okay. he or she does not make headlines i have no <laughs> idea who it is uh, my governor makes headlines yeah oh, uh, he well up. yeah he does yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, and I'm a huge good. fan because is he, Governor DeSantis is all about personal freedom and liberty. Yeah. I'm like, I can yeah. get behind he, this man. He and he's I, do, I I don't know if he's. Do you think he'll run in 2024? He's already said that he's not going to. Oh, okay, I that, I listen. I don't pay attention to politics. Period. I, I like, mean, uh, get selfishly, I don't want him to because it's like you know. I, would, I think I don't I want to run the risk of having a crappy governor. Um, oh yeah. God, that he freed woman. <laughs> no well, there. I think Trump is running in 2024 again. Mm. Is, that, is that what I've heard? I I don't know. Nobody's actually announced anything, so at this mm, point, it's yeah. just speculation. It's going to be yeah. It's going to be kind of wild. That's going to be a wild one because I don't know if Joe Biden's running again either. And even if he does, I don't know. I don't even know if he he'll be able to stand by then. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. <laughs> I mean, not for yeah. nothing. Maybe, maybe have a president who can stand and not fall over um, <laughs> on a flight of stairs up Air Force One. Yeah. Maybe string together a sentence. But, I don't know. It's a low yeah. bar at this yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's funny, though, is like it's it's important. Like I'd never really understood. Like that's why I've gotten a little more into politics like here in Utah, although I really try to stay out of most of it. It's just like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, that's a comment. But, but the, the stuff that I do get involved with is because like, I really didn't understand before like talking to business owners and getting into like this kind of world of like founders and entrepreneurs, how much like public policy actually affects local businesses, right? State and local Oh, it businesses. does. I mean, I, the it's reason crazy. why I'm like vehemently opposed to all those stupid lockdowns. And if anyone, I, I'm yeah. not going on record for this. If anyone's like, oh, you need to lock down, you need to go fuck yourself because that's not happening. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, why, I don't know why. That is a zero for me. That. I'm not locking yeah. down any. I don't know why we would ever do that. I I, I don't know. Oh, I, and by the way, they. they there they, are things I can tell you about this. Like, don't worry. There, I, I agree. Other, no, no, no. I mean, I know it's real. I know it's real for that. sure. But in Utah, like, it didn't really like, they, they were like, all right, we're doing like mandatory, like, or like stay at home orders. And then I remember it was like a Wednesday. And so we were, I was selling cars during that time. And like, I was the new car manager and all this stuff was going crazy going on. And I just remember like people in our, in our showroom buying cars, nothing was wrong. And then the next day, like nobody was there, but the weirdest part was, was like stay at home orders. And then they came out with this list of like, um, what i can't remember essential businesses and it was like everybody <laughs> like utah just like it was like auto shops grocery stores auto sales like anything selling like it was just like everybody was i didn't really feel like um there were a few restaurants that had to like and a few like gyms but even mm -hmm. the gyms were able to get around like they just started doing workouts outside and eating outside um i mean i know it kind of i know it affected utah quite a bit i'm not saying it didn't but i just i don't feel like it affected Utah, the ways that it might have affected. No, I, I really don't yeah. think that it affected most people the way um, things went down, particularly like in um, in Hawaii. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, it from the bottom of my heart, yeah. like I, I love Hawaii. I hope to come. I hope to move back someday, even if it's just half the time. Like, it's a really, really beautiful place, but it's also corrupt as hell. Um, yeah, they're and, yeah. Was, I remember seeing some of the my my family's in Hawaii. It's just it's I, it's too extreme. I don't like extreme anything. Um, mm -hmm. and and you find that most people, unless they're the, the extremists themselves, generally don't like it either. Yeah, um, just, it was yeah, just it makes. Like, I was like, we have the best weather, literally in the world, <laughs> and you're telling people to stay indoors. Now I'm convinced you're idiots. Like, yeah, <laughs> you're all dumb. I'm not doing this, you know. So I went outside yeah. all the time, you know, and um, and then they were like, That's "Oh, we need to wear your mask outside," and you know, here's a snitch line and blah blah blah. And I'm like, I do yeah. remember that. 
you have gone too far. I heard about that, that they Aloha were like and incur- encouraging people to like call on other people. Like Yes, yeah, yes, that, that actually <laughs> happened. It was extremely distressing and it's just, that is not a culture I want to be a part of. And no, as much as it hurt pretty- for me and Amadeo to move away, man, life is so much better here in Florida. Like, and it's not like I'm out doing crazy stuff. It's not like I'm walking up to people and licking their eyeball or anything. I just <laughs> I want to be able to walk outside without being like glared at or having, you know, the, you know, the Nancy Brigade, you know, come and get me. Like, no. <laughs> so awesome. That's hilarious. No, that, and that's, I don't know. I, yeah, I, people w- have always kind of told me in the past, like, like that I'm not a very polarizing person. Like I tend to just like agree with, you know, I like, cause I see all the sides, but the polarizing, but I realized that that's polarizing. <laughs> it's like, Dalton, you can't agree with everybody. And I'm like, but everybody's got good points. Like I didn't agree with the lockdowns. Uh, I got vaccinated and I wore a mask so that I didn't have to talk to anybody. Like, so I didn't have like people come up to me and like, I mean, but so here's like, the thing right, though, you, you were into social distancing before it was a thing. <laughs> Right. Probably, like, probably. and then listen, yeah. I, I remember going to business events years ago and we would do the whole awkward hug thing. And it's like when COVID arrived, I was like, Oh, thank God that's over. Yeah. <laughs> Stop hugging me. No, I don't want to shake your hand. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, no. that's I mean, listen, I, I'm a very <laughs> outgoing person, you know, but I am an introvert. So I'm an outgoing yeah, introvert and yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I get a little bit of social anxiety and sometimes a little bit of stranger danger. It's like, uh, you want to yeah. touch me, stop it. That's true though. That it, there was some good things that came out of like the- Every yeah, introvert now, I was just, excited about lockdowns. Yeah, I just fist bumped now. Like, uh, well, and though I didn't like shaking hands because I've always felt like it was this unnecessary power dynamic. Like, are you shaking someone's hand the right way or whatever? And I'm like, oh my gosh, this- Are you this squeezing is like, it enough? Enough pumps? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? Like, did shape. you get web to web in the hand? Did, like, yeah, did you I, do it right? I always- Because if you come in sideways and you do the <laughs> fingertip, like dead fish grippy, you're done. I know. I I was, that was always the weirdest stuff for me. Like when old guys would, would or like, you know, you, I don't know. I just, I grew up in a very like old school town. So like they would teach you about like, handshakes and things like that and I just thought oh that was always so weird like having a bunch of old guys come up and like <laughs> like I'm really concerned about the way you shake hands son let's figure this out I'm like I'm not going <laughs> in there to learn how to shake hands with you dude like that's just stranger danger I'm not doing don't that. tell <laughs> me you're one of those dead fish people no don't I'm not me. I can like I have big hands I'll sh- I shake hands fine but it's always like I always just like it was always like you know and maybe that's just like my anxiety, but I was always like, I was always like, why are, is everybody worried about how I shake hands? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> now I just hmm. do like fist. Have you, did you ever run into that? Like, have you ever? Um, I don't know. I maybe, ran into I that know. when I was probably in my very early career. And then uh, later yeah. people wanted to compliment me on my handshake because I have a nice firm you know, one, yeah. maybe two pumps, you know, <laughs> like web to web, like depends on the audience. You know what I'm saying? But like, think yeah, about it. You, know, you do, you go in for the yeah, one pump yeah. and it's like, yeah, like we're yeah. here to do business. <laughs> and, and I mean, like, two pumps, it's like, nice to meet you. Three pumps. It's like now everybody. Yeah, that's what pump. I wanted to avoid. That's why I don't shake hands. Cause I'm like, I don't care. I do fist bump. That's cool. There, nobody's going to judge me. on. I on get mad when people bump. don't blow it up if they want to fist bump me. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, like, exactly. what do you mean? We're, we're going to fist bump, but you're just not going to blow it up. Lame. That's more, see, that's more fun to me. But these are the things like in business that I'm just like, oh, geez. But that's, you know, that's crazy that uh, just the wild, just the, yeah, the wild story of just getting into ammunition anyway. So let me ask yeah, you, this. Pretty was, your, was your husband like, um, bit, like making ammo before you guys had started like the business? I think I heard you say yeah, that. Yeah, he was like, making it for himself. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's hard to do for us. And it was definitely a lot of fun um, to, you know, go to the range and, you yeah. know, practice. And, you know, he taught himself how to, you know, do everything. And he became yeah. like a real scientist about it, which I really, really appreciate. Um, yeah, it was actually yeah, because there is like a cool. science. There is a science behind it. Like I've seen, oh, people yeah. make, seen people make ammo and I'm like, oh, my gosh, dude, that's crazy. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's I, it's really bananas. Like I, I'm always in I, there with like my friends making if my friend is making ammo and I've only been in there a couple of times, but I always felt like I was going to die. It's like, this feels like I'm going to be on a headline of science experiments gone wrong tomorrow. If, uh, well, you know, bit. only if you're lucky, um, <laughs> you know, here's the thing about gunpowder. It like, it doesn't like explode. It catches fire, you know, but when it's in the tiny little, you know, brass that it's sitting in the pressure from the fire is what makes the projectile go boom. Not mm-hmm. because like, if you've got like all this gunpowder, it's going to be like, pow, pow, pow. Mm-hmm. No, it, it's, um, it's like a different type. There's like a, there's a high explosive and a low explosive and that's called, that's classified as a low explosive. Mm. That's interesting. The, mm-hmm. the crazy I learn thing- so much every <laughs> single day and it's like the mountain of things I don't know, like is casting a mighty dark shadow over the mountain, <laughs> the itty bitty little anthill of what I do know. And it's crazy. Like I, you know, I've, yeah. I've gotten to learn quite a bit, but like every single day, like our customers teach us things. My sales team teaches us things like, not really us, actually, they're all teaching me. Right, <laughs> the other right, day, right. I was really like what he's doing. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just learning from everybody and just, I mean, shoot, even the fire marshal in uh, the city of Benel, he was teaching me and he's like, oh yeah, well, you know, this is this type of explosive and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, is it now? Huh. <laughs> Dude, it's- wild. I've learned something today. You yeah. need this fire extinguisher because it will actually take care of it for you. Oh, you mean any old thing won't work? Correct. Right, right. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And, but that's also the cool part. I, I hear that so much from business owners and it's a really special thing when you can be like, you know, it's like, you just learn more every day. You learn things that you didn't know because you just, nobody actually knows what it's like to get into a business, any kind of business before they do. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like, I feel like that's the beauty yeah. of like the entrepreneurial journey is like, it doesn't matter how ready you are. Like shit's always going to hit the fan and you, that's what makes the difference with everybody. I feel like. Yes. The, the shit has definitely hit the <laughs> fan um, and it is all over the place. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's one of those things where, um, yeah. you know, we're continually learning. We're continually thrown curveballs, And I really believe that, you know, you're, um, your metal, if you will, uh, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur is tested on a daily basis of like, you know, can I put this together? Can I solve (laughs) this problem? Can I meet this, you know, this particular challenge? And, you know, it's, it's a continual, um, onslaught of challenges when you're getting a business going. And yeah, there are some days where I'm like, wow, why am I here? And then I remember, oh, it's because I'm the relentless person that can figure out anything. <laughs> I'm humble and I learn and um, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just that person. Like I will show up when other people won't. Yeah. Like, and like it, what it, the rest of me for you... success is not skill. It's not a degree. It's relentless yeah. pursuit of something and showing up. Yeah. Showing up and, and just getting it done. Yeah. Just meeting every challenge with like that, that mm-hmm. attitude of like, you know, I have to get this done right like mm-hmm. this has to get done and i don't think you know because you brought you bring up a good point with like introverts and extroverts and things like that like it doesn't matter which like either of those types of like any type of personality i believe can come with that attitude you know of like i just have to get this done and that's what that's the that's what makes us all you know that's what makes business owners and entrepreneurs that's what levels the playing field for everybody is like anybody can have that determination you know what i mean Absolutely. I mean, well, that's, that's the great, you know, I mean, guns and ammo, that's the great equalizer. It's like, go ahead, come (laughs) at me. You know, I, I mean, physically I can't stop you, but I can stop you with a fire up firearm. You know, if you're, if you're trying to attack me, you know, it's a great equalizer. Even if you have a a gun, great. May the best marksman win, (laughs) you know, and like, it doesn't matter about size anymore. Right. So that's, that's that's one thing I like, but you know, the, the whole thing about entrepreneurship is I, I firmly believe that everybody can do it. However, they need to be very aware of, are you a starter or are you a continuer? Because there are two types and rarely do they live in the same body. The starters are the people Mm. like me, like I, you know, I'm the visionary. I will figure out what the system is. I will build the machine but I don't want to be the person who runs it. So you would never see me as COO of any company. That would be a mistake for everybody. Mm. Um, But I belong in the executive chair because it's very new. It's very novel every single day. I thrive in that environment. I do a great Mm. job. I also do a great job at finding COOs. Like I can Mm -hmm. do that. And I have done that. 
Now, Amadeo, by contrast, he's built for the COO job, so he has that. Um, the executive stuff, it's not really his um, jam. He doesn't like it. Um, he can do it, but like under duress, it's kind of like with me in operations. I just, I want no part of it. So, um, you know, you've got different types of people. And if you can get really clear, oh, I'm, I'm the visionary. I'm, I'm like the marathon runner. Which one are you? And mm. if you can either hire or partner with someone who is the opposite, great. You're going to be yeah. in better shape. Yeah. Yeah. That's true though. Is uh, the, just, it's getting a team. Cause I feel like I'm kind of the same. I feel like I'm the, I feel like I'm the guy who can go in there and like get it done, but I'm really bad at like vision, visionary stuff. Like I can buy into your vision. I can buy into your vision and be like, yeah, dude, that's sick. I, I 100%. I didn't even think of that. Then they're like, how do you get it done? I'm like, I got this. <laughs> like, let's Yeah, roll. exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's really good. And I think that's why my husband and I are really well matched from a business perspective because yeah. he has the things that I don't have and I have the things that he doesn't have. Yeah. I think um, you make a great point when you talk about like just business owners in general about that, mm -hmm. that level of self-awareness that you have to, that there has to be some set level. You have to achieve some level of self-awareness, some higher level of self-awareness before you can start digging into all of this. Absolutely. I mean, well, that, that definitely touches on a big part of like, you know, what I do with my other company. Yeah. Um, you know, it, like you really do need to have uh, that self-awareness. You need to know what you're made of. You need to know really your shortcomings because what you don't want to do is find out the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I, boy, I can't be more sincere about that. Like you don't want to find that out. Um, like after the fact, you don't want to find out like in the middle of like something just going sideways. Yeah. Oh my God, I am not equipped to deal with this. Wouldn't you like to know that ahead of time? Yeah, seriously. No, I mean, we oh. all would. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is like, we all have the capacity to, um, to learn, to grow, but there's certain character traits like me and my stubbornness, my relentlessness, that's a character trait that's not trainable. Me learning about federal ammunition excise tax, I hate it, but it's learnable. Right, right, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it was that book, I heard, I heard about it. Um, it's on my list, but I haven't gotten to you, but it's like everything is figure outable. Yeah, I think that was a Marie Forleo book. I, I don't know but it's, I, it's on my list to read but it's true yeah that's why the I, title I, like works. The title. I feel like, I feel like I've read the whole book just by reading the title but you know what I mean because it's like dang if that's not one of the best phrases like everything is figure outable like you got this man we get this done 100%, 100%. <laughs> that's so true that's so awesome okay cool well Laura um I I really appreciate your time where can you know if this is some something people want to get involved with they want to check out your stuff how do they do that if you go to sovereignammo.com, uh, you can find us really easily. It's um, sovereign, it's E-I-G-N, but E is first, sovereignammo.com. There you go. Check it out. You can call us if you want and something then, special, custom made for you. We can do that. We can do big bulk orders. We don't have our e-commerce turned on yet intentionally, um, sure. but yeah, just call us. We'll take good care of you. And then your coaching business, because you have that coaching business on the side, you help entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. get started and everything like that what to give us the short note version of that and how they can get a hold of you for that sure um so i guess the the broad strokes of what that is is i help entrepreneurs to do kind of what i'm doing uh with my other business i help them to figure out their shortcomings help them to get their business going help them to figure out an exit strategy blah 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 the marketing i mean there's just so much to it and um I work with only a few clients a year and uh, you can find out more about that at lara.dibenedetto.com. I hope you have show notes because there's a lot of people who can't spell <laughs> dibenedetto. Dibenedetto. Uh, I got, I, I figured out how to do it when we met the first time. <laughs> there will be uh, show notes. That will be in all the descriptions. So thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. It's been fun. Yeah.